We're going to be talking about what we'd like to change in school as far as technology. I'm very excited to share my ideas because I think that technology can definitely give us power. I'm excited to see a lot of young people here because lots of times we have these conferences and a lot of gray-haired guys like me and I really want to hear some students' perception. Personally, I want a little bit of a challenge. You're going to see the results of pioneering teachers who have sorted out that it's more than technology. It's redesigning the role of the learner and the relationship those learners have with the world. Well, it's an absolute thrill to be able to do this Idea Jam with Intel, live webcast. With that, my name's Alan November. I'm senior partner at November Learning. And in the audience today, we have teachers and administrators and students. We're going to hear from people over Skype around the United States. And I think by the end of this day, if you are not inspired about new roles of kids and kids making a contribution, and teachers who have learned how to empower children, you better check your pulse. <laughs> what we're going to see today are kids solving problems that are more uniquely qualified for a time when we have these powerful tools we can place in the hands of kids. We've got three questions today that I think are really, really important. One is, who owns the learning? And it's my opinion that when the learner owns the learning, they take more responsibility, more work, more quality, more effort, more collaboration. Another question about today that emerges out of this work is are students creating a legacy, creating work that can be used by other people? And we're going to find out the answer is yes. The other idea we're going to see some of today is this concept called the flipped classroom. So it's a phenomenally exciting time. Probably the biggest change that describes most of what we're going to see today is a shift of control. That what used to be more teacher-directed is now more student-empowered directed. The way we've always done things might not be the way we need to do things moving forward. It's a phenomenally exciting time. I'm thrilled you've joined us today. And without further ado, I think we should move on and take a look at one of the most exciting projects I've seen Eric Marcos working with his students in designing tutorials in mathematics. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. One day, the, this, this girl over here had a question, and it was like late at night or something, and I happened to check my email. And it was like, how do I do a math problem? And so I had just discovered this thing called like Camtasia Studio, and so I said, oh, let me try to show you quickly. So I made a quick little uh, recording of what I was saying and what I was writing and then I hit another button that made a video file and I emailed it up to to her and within a matter of like a half hour or so oh my gosh that was great you know thank you I understand it we're gonna play a little snippet of a, a, a video that was done actually by these two kids right here this is just a very simple uh, video where the student is showing you how to divide fractions and when you hear some of the words that he says you know, he says, um, how many halves are in two is one of the, one of the key like, phrases he says, which to me as a math teacher, I'm like, oh, I think, I think he understands the concept. Six times two over one equals 12 over one, which is equal to 12, and 12 is your answer. So we make math videos by using a microphone, a tablet PC, and Camtasia Studios. But if you're on a budget, there are other alternatives to the tablet PC, like a Wacom tablet. With a Wacom tablet, it's basically like a tracking pad that you can write on, that you can hook up to any computer. So I plugged in my Wacom tablet and made a video for my friend in Argentina who was confused about a chemistry problem. I emailed it to her, she got it, and she understood the topic. Just a couple other places we're going to show you how we share the videos once the videos get made by the students. And so there's an iTunes podcast is one place. And there's a, a website we have called mathtrain.tv. We share our videos, of course, in the classroom as a way to teach. Online at mathtrain.tv. Um, screencast.com, we have iTunes podcasts on YouTube. And you can have it on your iPhone, iPad. There's an app coming soon. And on your mobile devices, you can get them. So that's cool. <laughs> I have one really important question for you, Eric. Is it fair to say that by, in a sense, shifting control to your student design team, 
they work harder, you work less hard. <laughs> Absolutely. So the, the real goal here is to have students develop a global work ethic. Because acquiring knowledge by itself is not enough. It's the discipline of sitting down and seeing a project through to its end, having a real sense of commitment to the quality of work. There were definitely times where it took hours. Hours, produce yeah. one three minute. Yeah. yeah. I remember there would be times that my mom would be outside and I would call her, just five more minutes, please, let me finish my video, and that would happen a few times. Is your mom here? <laughs> hey, mom. Yeah. So your daughter is calling you on the cell phone, begging to stay in school at six o'clock so she can do more mathematics. <laughs> how, how do you feel about that? I feel that I have to contain her sometimes because she loves to study. And I think if I could sum up maybe why you begged your mother not to pick you up, is that you had a higher purpose in getting a grade. You were actually adding value to the world. Is that a reasonable conclusion on my part? Purpose? So one of the challenges for teachers is how much purpose is embedded in the work we give students. On that note, it'll be a great place to end. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you You're much. an inspiration. Yay. All good.